Hi everyone and welcome to the Neurolympics podcast where we believe that every brain's got talent. This podcast is brought to you by Brains First, the company that helps you make better talent decisions powered by neuroscience. I'm Lucy, I'm the host of the Neurolympics podcast, and in case you're tuning in for the first time and wondering what my background is, well, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in applied neuroscience. So I really love to apply these psychological and neuroscientific insights to any field, and I hope this can be super beneficial to you to grow and further excel in your personal life, in your work life, in your sports career, wherever. With our episodes, we're now running through the behavior cycle, the six natural skills that we are measuring at Brains First with our Neurolympics cognitive games, the cognitive tests developed to measure your cognitive potential and then match it to the tasks and job environments that suit your cognitive profile. And in the first two months, we addressed the topic of attention and thinking, so how you take in information and then how you process these information and think about these information in, I think, really interesting episodes with our co-founders and our neuroscience experts, uh, Dr. Elias Slichter and Andries van der Ley, and also on two uh, solo episodes. So make sure to catch up if you haven't done so yet. And this month we're addressing the topic of decision-making. We've already released a episode with Andries, where we spoke about the fundamentals of decision-making, how we make decisions, how it can go wrong, especially in the workplace. We related to HR decisions, talent decisions, talent management, also study decisions and job-related decisions. So I think we touched upon some really cool points and topics, and I'm sure you're going to find a link here somewhere in the description now or in the show notes. And I would love for you to tune into this episode as well, if you haven't done so. Today, I want to use the opportunity to touch upon some more decision-related topics. So actually how we are struggling nowadays with making decisions and what can help us to boost our decision-making capabilities. Thinking is fantastic, but if you've listened to my first two solo episodes on attention and thinking, I shared how we are overloaded nowadays by information. We're just represented with too many information on a daily basis, with too many choices. This leads to a cognitive drain throughout the day. Our mental resources are really demanded and required too much, you might say. Um, I also touched upon how we have, I think, a distorted image of productivity and how it's also not helping that we're experiencing a societal sleep problem. So in the end of the day, we're really draining our cognitive uh, capabilities. And you might ask yourself, What happens ultimately to decision making? Do we even have the mental space, the cognitive space to make good and healthy decisions? This is also a question that I asked you on the last episode. So let's dive into it. We're confronted with a billion choices nowadays. And this leaves us with an average of 35,000 decisions that we have to make on a daily basis. Well, now you might think this is a lot, but A lot of uh, decisions that we make happen in the system one kind of way, so intuitively or let's say subliminally, you're not really consciously aware of it or thinking about it. Um, But it starts with an overload on, I mean, it's also a luxury problem for most of us, but study directions you could go into, universities you could attend to. I shared last episode, we're confronted with about 200 different cereal types and 175 different uh, salad uh, dressings in a supermarket. And also, it doesn't help in our daily life that Netflix, for example, presents uh, 5,000 different titles um, and you end up scrolling through the library and uh, wanting to watch a movie. But after 20 minutes watching all these trailers, you're actually tired of it. You experience decision fatigue and you really think I might not even want to watch a movie anymore. And all these choices and all these options that we're presented with will have two negative effects on it, according to Barry Schwartz. Uh, He wrote a fantastic book and also spoke on a TED Talk episode that I really recommend you to watch. He's an American psychologist and it's called The Paradox of Choice. So here are the two negative effects he is talking about. Paradoxically, choice overload leads to can lead to choice paralysis rather than liberation. This is when our brains are confronted with too many options, we rather don't want to make any decision. And also a concept that ties into this is the fear of making the wrong decision, the fear of failure. We see it especially with 
high stake decisions made in business or professional sports where these decisions can have significant consequences. And a tip here is if you feel like you really cannot make a decision and the decision is just too much, you can break down the decision into less intimidating and more manageable parts. In psychology, we call this chunking, and this will help you reduce the cognitive load and also make little steps towards that bigger decision. And I think this decision paralysis also well, has the effect of postponing decisions. And I thought about it this morning that this gap year hype, so a lot of young people after they finish high school nowadays gonna go on a gap year. I did the same. I think with this gap year option, we're telling ourselves, I need to find myself, I need to take some time off before the hard real life begins. But I think ultimately we're just overwhelmed by decisions, life decisions we have to make because there's so many directions we can go into and we're afraid to make re really the wrong decision. And this is why I think in the end with the gap year, for example, we're trying to buy time to yeah, really postpone that these important life decisions we have to make. For example, which direction with my studies or work do I want to go into? Um, where do I want to live? All these questions can be really overwhelming. And don't get me wrong, I don't have the intention to roast a study direction. Now I'm just using it as an example. For example, there are study tracks like PPLE, so politics, psychology, law, and economics. You can study all of these four in one bachelor's degree. I think it's quite popular because, of course, we're all interested in a lot of things, but also it leaves the door open for later to go into any kind of direction. How are we supposed to make a decision now, what we want to end up working in, where we belong? So I think these study tracks, these more generic study tracks, also become more popular because ultimately we don't want to settle on really a decision of this is what I want to go for in my professional career. And even if we overcome this decision paralysis and this postponing of decisions, I think Barry Schwartz also thinks we are still not really satisfied. So why is that? Well, you have these billion other alternatives in your mind that you juggle between. And if also with the decision that you made, you're not 100% happy or you encounter like a negative consequence, you're immediately going to go back and think, shouldn't I have gone for this other decision? And while you made a decision, you are at the same time thinking about all these really attractive features of these alternatives that you could have gone for. So it's really hard for you to settle and be satisfied on the decision you made. And this also leaves us with really tremendous expectations of how this decision should end up with, which uh, consequences should come with this decision. We, we just build up these higher and higher expectations. And also this is affecting us on a daily life. You might not notice, but I have an example. I go to the gym and I listen to music with my AirPods and then I receive these notifications of friends like, hey, do you want to meet up? Do you want to go for dinner? Do you want to have a call? I love long calls with friends, these deep dives into really deep topics. And you also get a notification of an email that reminds you, oh, I forgot I should have done this and I still need to do this. And then it leaves you or it leaves me for seconds or minutes thinking about, is it okay that I'm in the gym now? Which is ridiculous, of course. But yeah, I'm thinking about all these alternatives of what I could do while I'm doing, while I decided to do this, namely going to the gym at the moment. And Barry Schwartz, interestingly, he's a psychology professor, says that he's nowadays assigning 20% less work to his students. Not because he thinks they're not smart enough to manage this high workload, but because he knows nowadays our mental resources are really occupied by all these other life decisions we have to make besides studying and besides diving into the study topics. Because our brains are just occupied by a lot of other things and a lot of other decisions we have to make at the same time. Well, this is a problem because we really, and this is pointing towards it, we do need cognitive resources because making decisions is cognitively demanding. And so if we want to make a decision, these cognitive resources we should really dedicate towards this decision are competing with all these other um, factors that are calling for our attention and calling for our thinking. And ultimately, do we have space to make these decisions? And here's an example of how you can free up your mental space. And it's the Steve Jobs black turtleneck example. 
So Steve Jobs famously wore a black turtleneck, jeans and sneakers almost every single day. Why? Because he said, if I keep wearing the same outfit, I don't have to decide in the morning what I need to wear. And so I have more mental capacity for all these other important decisions that I have to make later. So this is a really simple life hack, I think, but very efficient how you can boost up your smarter thinking and make, make some room for um, better decision making and better problem solving on a daily basis if you automate these you might say trivial tasks of what to eat or what to wear in the morning. This can really help. Besides what Steve Jobs did, you can try the 10-10-10 rule. This is coming from emotion regulation and long-term thinking. And it basically tells you to consider your long-term uh, effects and consequences on a certain decision. It asks you, the rule asks you to think about If I make a certain decision, how will I feel about it in 10 minutes from now, in 10 months and in 10 years? So this is really not about the trivial decisions on a daily basis you have to make, but more about these really important life decisions. I think it can really help to apply the second order consequence thinking. So not only the immediate effects that might also lead you to impulsive decision making, uh, decision making based on your emotions, but really consider the long term effects of a certain decision. The second tip is use a pre-mortem and this is coming from risk analysis. So before making a decision, you can think about if this decision would fail or would go wrong. And so you think about the potential risk factors and consequences of your decision, then what could be the potential causes of why it went wrong? And what this does is it, well, kind of tries to counteract The overconfidence we sometimes have with decision making, like, yeah, this decision is definitely the best decision. I can just easily make it because it really forces you to think about these consequences, what could go wrong, these risk factors. And ultimately, you can apply strategies before making the decision to already mitigate these risk factors. Then the third tip is really sleep on these big decisions. Because when you have a good night's sleep, a good night rest, you're restoring your mental capabilities. You're also doing, your brain is doing some memory consolidation, some learning, and you might wake up with a really, you hopefully wake up with a really fresh mind to make a really important decision rather than at the end of the day. I also recommend you, by the way, to make really important decisions before lunchtime because throughout the day, your mental resources will deplete more and more. You will be cognitive trained throughout the day the more you do and also napping can help a nasa study on pilots found that taking a nap during the day can really boost your cognitive performance by 34 and your cognitive alertness by 100 and lastly you can apply the 70 rule act on enough information rather than perfectionism This is really for all the perfectionists out there, me including. It might be useful for you to settle on a decision that is good enough rather than to try to get all the necessary information, writing this never-ending story before you arrive at a solution because you sometimes want to put progress over perfection. This is what I had to do with my master thesis, for example. I really could not stop with my literature analysis in the, in the first place. And my professor, my supervisor really had to tell me, Lucy, this is good enough. Just go with what you have right now. This really applies to the thorough thinkers among us that just cannot settle on a decision. And also, don't be afraid to make the wrong decision because ultimately your brain, for your brain, it's not as harmful in the moment of course your brain might be like this didn't feel very pleasant and your brain will also this is a really fantastic feature will attach this emotional marker to what you experience as a wrong decision so that in a in case you experience a similar scenario again you'll feel this negative emotion and it will tell you don't go for that decision but ultimately your brain is a prediction machine and what you do with wrong decisions well your brain just keeps updating its prediction it becomes better at predicting and so wrong decisions in a way are not really harmful for your brain maybe question to you do you think there is even right or wrong decisions or do you think there's more like bad and good decisions and lastly I want to advise you to not fall into the status quo bias, the tendency to stick with the more familiar because you're afraid to leaving the comfort zone. You're trying to avoid the discomfort that comes with change. But I want to remind you, inaction, so not acting on something, 
deciding to stick with the familiar and not making any other decision is also a decision. So I'll leave you with this uh, last thought. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you could uh, gain some valuable insights that help you to improve your decision making, to free up some cognitive capacity that you can really dedicate towards making good and healthy decisions. And I would love to see some comments, actually, some engagement with you. So please leave any questions, any insights um, in the comments section. would love to hear from you. And also, we would love to see you more frequently on the Neurolympics podcast. So please make sure to subscribe to all of our platforms or any of the platforms. We're out there on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, of course. And you can find all these platforms um, if you go to our website, www www.brainsfirst.com slash podcast. And please also make sure to subscribe to our social media channels, Instagram and TikTok, where we update you regularly on our podcast, but also other brain insights. So you don't want to miss out on that. And yeah, everyone stay tuned uh, for the next episodes to come. I'm excited to see you next time on the Neurolympics podcast. Stay healthy, stay happy, everyone. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.